I want to welcome you uh, to our study of the Book of Psalms. Uh, my name is Raphael. Aristotle. And today we are on Psalm 13, which is a very powerful psalm um, uh, written by David. And this is what uh, Charles Spurgeon says, um, and I think it describes this psalm very well. It says, whenever you look into David's psalms, uh, you will you will some um, you will some way or other in some way or other see yourself. Mm -hmm. You will never get into a corner, um, but you will you you never get into a corner, but you will find uh, David in that corner. Mm -hmm. I think that I was never so low that I could not find David was lower, mm -hmm. and I never climbed so high that I could not find David up above me. And so here, what he is simply saying is talking about the fact that this psalm is going to talk about mm -hmm. the lowest place you could be in, yeah. and then also the highest place. Mm -hmm. And in there, the psalms are able to speak about our deepest depressions, and yeah. then also able to lift us up high so that we are um, at, the, at, at the cloud nine, right? And so, mm -hmm. uh, Larry, could you read some Psalm 13 for us? Okay. For the choir master, a psalm of David. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I store up anxious concerns within me, agony in my mind every day? How long will my enemy dominate me? Consider me and answer, Lord my God. Restore brightness to my eyes, otherwise I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have triumphed over him, and my foes will rejoice because I am shaken but I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me generously. Wow, yeah. that's good. good stuff, yeah. So, so this um, uh, Psalm 13, um, this is what uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Parker said. He said the Psalm begins uh, with winter and ends with summer. Right, mm -hmm. uh, it begins with the low muffled tones um, of of just like of sorrow, but it ends with uh, with the rapture of praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 I love also what Matthew Henry says. He says, uh, "What do we do in days of trouble? Days of trouble must become days of prayer. They must become days of prayer." So we see this like here. Um, and let me run through just an outline of what um, what this book what what this one looks like. Um, you see, in verse one to two, uh, just complaint in the midst of uh, of crisis, um, where he says, "How long?" And by the way, when you look at that, "How long?" Um, it's meant to be. It, it's it's it gets more and more intense. Mm -hmm. The pain gets more and more intense as he cries out how long so he says how long god will you forget how long will you will you mm -hmm. hide from me how long must i um uh, must i be discouraged mm -hmm. and how long must i be defeated mm -hmm. um and then after that you see from verse three to four you see this request for uh deliverance uh from this crisis and he says remember me oh god uh remember me and then rescue me god um, and then it ends with this ongoing faith in the midst of crisis um, mm -hmm. where he says, I will rely on God and then I will rejoice in God. Larry, mm -hmm. what are some of the thoughts that at least come out from, from this song? Well, the most uh, quick observation, we don't uh, compare notes before we do these. Yeah. I have the Matthew Henry quote. I have the Charles Spurgeon quote. I also <laughs> have the Joseph Parker quote. So uh, you, you stole all my quotes. Um, but one thing that um, it strikes me, we, we, pro we don't talk about this quite so much, but these were meant to be sung yeah. to the choir director. Mm -hmm. I, they don't sound like the type of nice songs that we sing on yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. We like to sing praise songs. Mm -hmm. We think a praise song is where we're, where we're rejoicing, and which is certainly true. But you can, you can express your heart in, in the laments. Mm -hmm. And this is a lament. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we were just talking recently about, uh, just you and I, just about slavery. You know, the slaves developed those 
uh, Negro spirituals, yeah. which were their expression of the lament that they were going through, mm -hmm. and and yet they had this hope. You know, they 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 in their their lamenting, there was always that future hope that they were looking forward to. It that kind of gave them some kind of strength in the midst of all their suffering, uh, and I just find that because it ends uh, as. Um, you know, they, I'm, star, I'm, I'm trapped in this uh, how long, how long, four times repeated, yeah. this, this despair. And, and then, but the, by verse sing, I will sing to the Lord. Yeah. So somewhere he's gone through this transformation. He's, he's, he's recognized this sorrow, this painful sorrow. Yeah. He's, he's appealed to the Lord. Consider me an answer in verses uh, three and four. He's, he's, he's invoking and asking God to come. And something's happened now. He finds, I have trusted in what? In your faithful love, your steadfast love, your covenantal mm -hmm. love, that, that Hebrew word hesed that occurs again and again yeah. and again. What God has promised, he is able to perform. He, and the, the hesed does not change. It's steadfast, mm -hmm. uh, faithful. Uh, we don't even have any English words to absolutely capture the idea. Yeah. Yeah. But world's conditions are going to change. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be, and right now, we're in a very difficult time. Yeah. And what he's experiencing is is what we would call abandonment. Yeah. And, it, of course, that brings to mind Elijah, who mm -hmm. had this triumphant, you know, victory over the, the, the you know, the gods of Baal. And, and then he, and then he takes off, finds himself in a cave. He's, he's, he's terrified. And, and complains in a sense to God. Yeah. I'm the only one left. Mm. You know, I, 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 there's a there's a you know contract on my life. You know, Jezebel has a hit list on me and a hit a, ready to take me out. And 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 the Lord then in that despair, as he gets his soul quiet, the Lord reassures him that he's there. And by the way, there's 17,000 who haven't bent the knee, knee to Baal. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's seeing himself very isolated. I think by us singing these songs together, we all can join in yeah. because it seems like I'm isolated, but then I look around, there's a lot of us that are experiencing mm -hmm. that. And collectively, we now become as a body and we find our way through that, recognizing his steadfast love. And I was, rec I was reminded once again, um, I was talking to one of our elders, Gus, uh, and as we were writing just, uh, uh, in our service, we have a time of uh, just a uh, confession, mm -hmm. lamenting, and all that, and and we were going through some phrases where where we were really just where we were saying, God, you're a God, a God of justice. Yeah. Where is your justice? Mm -hmm. And and um, this really then opens up like just a, an idea of um, the whole idea of lament and accusation. Uh, accusation, like where you where you are listening to David and say, "How long must I take counsel from my soul, mm -hmm. um, and have sorrow in my heart? How long shall my enemies be exalted? Mm -hmm. Consider me, answer me, O God. Lift up your eyes, lest I fall asleep." And you you're kind of hearing just this thing of like, where uh, will you forget me forever? Mm -hmm. The sense of abandonment, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it. When you're reading this, it does have an accusatory kind of mm -hmm. uh, tone to it, um, but then really, like um, I think um, this is this is what uh, even uh, one theologian Brueggemann said: lament, accusation is not antithetical to to covenantal relationship mm -hmm. with God, but rather in a true covenantal relationship, a believer needs to have the freedom to take such accusations to God, mm -hmm. which, which really just kind of talks about like that. When we pray these questions and we, and it sounds as if we're accusing God, um, and, and one mm -hmm. of our laments in our service kind of, there's almost like sometimes where I'm watching people cringe because <laughs> they're like, I don't know whether to ask these things yeah. from God. God, yeah. where is your justice? Yeah. We feel abandoned, we feel lost, please come and mm -hmm. save. But yet, actually, that's not the opposite of faith. It actually comes as part mm. and parcel of faith. Mm. Where I love David because he shows me that God can take punches. Yeah. That God can take difficult questions. And God can actually deal with even us, 
a mm-hmm. deep sense of abandonment, which is where mm-hmm. now maybe like where we have to kind of look at our faith today that tries to stifle like reality and try to actually deny reality. Oh, yeah like and negative things or things that are going mm. on mm. Uh, just simply because we don't know what to do with that mm. but David is going to show us here that man like when we're tempted to deny these difficult emotions um, or mm. or sometimes even tempted to distract ourselves from them um, this is actually like it this is when we need to pay attention to them and we need to voice them to God mm. uh, and bring them and when the voice of these emotions come out, they they being they bring about God's transforming grace. Mm. That there are some emotions that we like to read verse uh, verse verse the last ones where I will sing because He's there dealt mm. bountifully mm. with me. But we never want to actually deal with the negative emotions of like, mm. where are you, God? I feel abandoned. Mm. You know so. Mm. You know, it's it. While you were talking, it just reminded me also of God's not offended yeah. by us asking mm-hmm. questions. Mm-hmm. Here's here's Moses. Yeah. Who God is speaking through a burning bush. It's yeah. not being consumed, and he's hearing the very voice of God, and he's saying, "But Lord, what if?" You know, if, he yeah. he's actually mm-hmm. giving kind of, and God doesn't say, "Shut up, Moses." He said, "Okay, I'll give you." You want signs, throw down your staff, you got it, okay, yeah. good, but yeah. I don't speak very well, okay, I'll give you an iron. God was meeting Moses where he was at, he was, didn't yeah. want to leave him yeah. where he was at, as you mm-hmm. like to say. But here's the thing, when Moses said, Lord, send somebody else, when Moses began to rebel yeah. against what God had said, it's one thing to question Lord, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. God's mm-hmm. open to that. I think even Job was like, I don't get it, Lord. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest here. I'm, 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 I'm asking. But when you then cross a line yeah. and say, no, Lord, you're not in this. I don't reckon. And now, I love the King James says it, I think, better sometimes. And the Lord's anger was kindled against me. Yeah. You know, when God's anger gets kindled, you better, you realize he's starting a fire. You better be ready. <laughs> But I think that's something that we sometimes are, we feel guilty for expressing those things. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Psalms is our language. It yeah. gives us a language of lament mm-hmm. because he really is not sinning and bringing these things before yeah. God. He's yeah. actually expressing true thoughts, true emotions, and the Lord is, is hearing them because he's answering him through his word. He's, he's yeah. a, a reminding him of those promises that is as that um, that David has, so it's a, it's it's, out of lament comes encouragement yeah. if you do it properly. I properly, guess if yeah. you say it that yeah. way or, or in a and and line. this now then really begins to show us, um, show us that there is room. One of the human experiences we're gonna feel is just this sense of abandonment, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when we do feel this sense of abandonment. Um, our when we feel those sense of abandonment or when we feel so lonely and by ourselves and we feel um, you know obviously there's going to be promises from other things like for example uh, just this is where drugs come in this is where we run to any other identities but we see David here um, having a way of actually saying I have a complaint there's a crisis around me, um, and he's really just saying, um, I, I, you know, lest my enemy say they prevailed over me, lest they rejoice, mm-hmm. and because I'm shaken, he says, but this is what I do. What our call is, is to run and hold on to this covenantal love what, mm-hmm. that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. This love that never, that never moves, and this covenant, it's a loyal love from God. If anything, this is running back to his character. Mm. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. His salvation doesn't come from... And, and it, it, it's actually pretty interesting because he is, he is having this ongoing steadfast faith in the midst of the crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so this kind of takes us back into the tradition of why I love scripture, especially even in this time. 
uh, one of the things that like as I've been looking at uh, the context where we're in and looking at injustice, looking at people dying, painful deaths mm -hmm. and all that, I've been, I found myself sighing and saying, how long, oh Lord? Mm -hmm. How long? When I'm seeing hatred, when I'm seeing mm -hmm. racism, when I'm seeing, uh, and this is, the, it expands a little bit more when I'm seeing tribalism, when I'm saying, when I consider the things that I've gone through in life, things that I've seen, I've seen disease tear down my loved ones, mm -hmm. and one after another, I've seen death claim, and then, you know, I've seen disease, and I've seen scares of, and mm -hmm. all those things, whether it's racism, tribalism, whether it's suffering, whether it's, I've found myself able to say, God, how long? How long, God? And the truth of the matter mm -hmm. is that, like, I am getting shaken, but you know one thing that I have? Like, this is what the psalmist would say in Psalm 73, Whom have I in heaven but you? Yeah. So I'm not going to run. I'm not going to let my feet slip and run to other refuges, uh, like a refuge. Uh, and, and I'm just going to stay here and I'm yeah. going to say that, God, you, you have this covenant of love for me and you never fail. That's hinted you know? at in verse mm. 3. Mm. Because everything you just described, mm. we could summarize under the word darkness. Yeah. All mm -hmm. of those, the That's oppression, yeah. disease, sin, it's all dark. Yeah. I'm living in a dark world, mm -hmm. and God, it's just dark. And now, answer me, Lord my God, restore brightness to my yeah. eyes. Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. see the light, mm -hmm. oh Lord. And, and now, that light is not going to be that the darkness mm -hmm. is, the, the darkness is still there, but now I'm seeing He who is yeah. the light. Mm -hmm. Now, I that that's now I'm able to behold, and it's and really it's it's a word for revival. Yeah. That my soul is being revived. I'm now understanding and receiving that that he is there in the midst of this darkness. Yeah. yeah. He's not showing himself, and and I, again, what do we? The dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. You know, is an expression we use yeah. sometimes when we get, when you get down and and what the Lord pray, Lord, bring brightness to my eyes, bring and re revive me. And the dark night of the soul is something very useful for our faith. Mm -hmm. Because it, then, it. it really then, it, it tests us to help us to see whether this is truly who I trust. Yes, exactly. And so it, it's one of those things where I, I'm at this place where I, I realize every single believer is going to experience the dark mm -hmm. night of the soul. I, yeah. And um, I'm reading a book, uh, a, a book uh, on... Uh, it's called Wait With Me, Meeting God in Loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and and this is what it uses. It says this, what if loneliness was a doorway? Mm -hmm. What if this sense of abandonment was a doorway to a deeper life with God? What if, you know, uh, a deeper life, a deeper friendship with God? And so, um, and, and in there, uh, this author, um, this author kind of spent some time and he says, this is not the first time that's ever been. When we look at even just the greatest of the great, mm. they all experience this dark night of the soul. So Abraham, Abraham uh, experienced mm. loneliness in his desire for family. And, then, and, and, and he mm. say, ends up saying, oh, Ish, oh, that Ishmael might live forever <laughs> in your sight. Mm. Moses experiences loneliness when he, fly, when he runs away from Egypt. Mm. Um, Jacob experienced loneliness in the face of his own ambition, mm -hmm. right? And then you see him even ending up running away from his brother. Um, and then at the same time, he, he experiences when his sons, his, his last two sons are actually facing persecution, right? Um, Elijah faces what you were talking mm -hmm. about. Elijah faces fatigue after the great victory. Nehemiah faces loneliness and leadership mm -hmm. as he dealt with opposition from outside and sabotage from in within. Job experiences loneliness and suffering while his friends yeah. offered little comfort. Mm -hmm. He even mm -hmm. says, you're miserable comfort. <laughs> exactly. right? yeah. Esther experiences... If you're my friends, they yeah. see my bad enemies, right? Yeah. <laughs> Esther experiences loneliness yeah. even in the palace. Wow. Yeah. In the palace where she says, but as for me, I've not even been called to come into the mm. presence of the king for mm. 30 days. Yeah. I don't know if what, what he's going to do. Is he going to depose of mm. me or whatever? And then Mary chose loneliness in her embrace of God's call. 
uh, she knew she was gonna get uh, despised because she became pregnant but and then Paul uh, experiences loneliness and mission uh, more than uh, enough times because he is you, you can hear him saying I long to see you I long and then not only that could you send send even Mark to prison come bring parchments for me and then ultimately yeah, I was gonna say the ultimate example Jesus faces like, deepest yeah. loneliness at the cross when he cries out my mm -hmm. God my God why have you forsaken me so yeah. I, I maybe this is a question that I really just wow. before we close could it be that when we are in these deep places, we try to treat it with pornography, we try to treat it with drugs, we try to treat it with uh, binge watching TV, we try to treat it with... And we justify it. Yeah, and we justify right. it. I, yeah, I, I gotta get out of this somehow. Yeah, I gotta I get, get out. And could it be that, yeah. just like this this, uh, this author, J Jason mm. uh, Govery says, could it be that, could it be that loneliness is actually a doorway to a deeper life with God. That you would actually recognize that you've got this loyal, steadfast, mm -hmm. immovable, divine companionship even mm -hmm. in the lowest places. Yeah. And, 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 and this is where I love Jesus because Jesus, how low did he go? Agony at the cross, but deep down in the grave, in there for three days, but he, and then he was raised from the dead. So therefore, he's able to raise us up from this Amen. kind of pit. So I, I love that. I love that. Uh, no, that's strong stuff because, uh, and you're running against some people's theology that says we should never be down. We should never yeah, have, have yeah. we should always be happy, happy, mm -hmm. and everything should work out. And if it doesn't, that means there's, there's sin or I got, I got to repent of something or... I'm not claiming the right verses. I mean, all of that is nonsense, really, because yeah. it's, it's so yeah. unscriptural. And and there's great examples of church history I certainly yeah. deny that as well. And this is this is why we're going to go to Athanasius. Yeah, well, <laughs> does Athanasius have a have a quote for this for, uh, yes, psalm? I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm sure he does. He says, "And if you are waylaid by the snare of your enemies." Mm and do not desert your post. I love this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do not desert your post. Yeah. Don't withdraw, don't go home. Mm -hmm. Don't withdraw from the fellowship. Don't withdraw, don't literally, and it says do not desert your post as if you were forgotten by God. Mm -hmm. This right here is probably what makes him Athanasius Contra Mundo. Yeah. Like and just if like, ever somebody, this is probably his favorite song. <laughs> yeah, but call upon the Lord, yeah. singing Psalm 13. Amen. Amen. When we feel abundant, and 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 guys, for me, mm -hmm. I will tell you the truth. There's a million times when I felt abundant, mm -hmm. and this is one of those psalms where I I just can't help it but say, How mm -hmm. long, oh God? Yeah. How long? And then at least I know that He's coming again. He is going to come and he's going to save us. And this is actually where, where at least, how do, how do I then keep on really seeing how God has dealt bountifully with me? Mm -hmm. Fix your eyes on Jesus, <laughs> the author and the finisher of him. Ooh. And then from there we realize he constantly, ever mm -hmm. is dealing bountifully with us. Mm -hmm. He constantly raises up. Because when I fix him, my eyes on him, that's where Ephesians yeah, comes in. Amen. He raises me up and makes me sit with him. Wow. So that, that's, that's the beauty of this psalm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say that like if ever you are struggling with this moment, moment uh, of staying down, recite a psalm like this, but also go and maybe just like, maybe this is a great time to go and, and just drench yourself self with Romans 8. Mm -hmm. Right? I consider that the sufferings of this present moment mm -hmm. are not worth in comparison with mm -hmm. the glory that is yet to come. Like for me, that's actually the, like just eat this up, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry, do you wow. have anything else to no, say? No, you dig in everything. You stole my quotes and, and you stole <laughs> my best thoughts. But uh, Which one was your favorite ones out of that? You know, I, 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 I really did like Spurgeon because yeah. he, he, he caught the idea that David 
when we get there, we find that David was already there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and that's that's a great thing. Even what we talked about uh, last week about the scripture, refinement yeah. of the yeah. scriptures, yeah. Uh, the, the, the like gold. As we as we come, wow, that was written just for me. In fact, I remember as a young Christian, I felt like there were verses in the Bible that were specifically put oh, in the Bible because yeah. they spoke to me yeah. so yeah. directly. I thought, uh -huh. wow, yeah. and that's that's uh, God's word is great. That's yes. why we're doing this. So. And my prayer is that God would be able to revive you and revive us through his word. And in times of suffering, let me remind you once again that God is not removed, but he is intimately bound up with you in suffering. At least mm -hmm. I would say, where do we see that? We see that at the cross, mm -hmm. that he has suffered everything. So therefore, run to him. Mm -hmm. Don't abandon your post, run to him, and you will find he is our present help in yeah, times of true. need. Yeah. Um, so Larry, do you want to pray? Uh, again, yeah. Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the beauty, the wonder, the magnitude of your word that mm. speaks so powerfully, Lord, even now in this day that we live in that was written thousands of years ago. It's almost like, Lord, you knew we were going to be experiencing what we're experiencing because your word speaks so directly to it. So we pray, Lord, we pray you would revive us, Lord. You'd bring that brightness to our eyes as we're walking through really uh, times of darkness in so many ways. But we can fix our eyes on you, Lord. We can see mm -hmm. Jesus and know that, that the worst things that we've experienced pale in comparison to what mm -hmm. Christ himself went through for us. Mm -hmm. and, and so we just thank you. We just have no words to thank you so much, Lord, for all that you've accomplished, all you've done. And we ask the blessing now upon, as we continue to look in your word, to continue to receive light from it, and continue to walk as you have told us to walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining us. I pray that God blesses you through this week. See you next week.